Um, we are going to go through this PowerPoint. Um, right now, it's Zach Cintron on here. I believe we have Jack Brosius going to be joining us. Um, but we're going to work through these slides, kind of give you some information going into time trials this weekend. Uh, so you guys are prepared and have all the, uh, the notes that you potentially need for everything that will come up. Uh, just a reminder for you guys, we are recording this webinar, um, so there will be a recorded version for you guys to see tomorrow. Uh, we will get that up as soon as possible, and we will also put the slide deck out. Both will be available on our coaches resource page, specifically the kayaking page itself. Um, in addition to that, we also always have the uh, question option that you can type in a question into the GoToWebinar feature, or you can raise your hand and we can open up the line to take care of you. Um, again, more than likely, we will be answering questions towards the end. I have Steve Bennett with me tonight to help me uh, moderate those questions and keep an eye out. Um, so if there are any that come up and we can answer throughout the webinar, um, we will take care of that. Uh, quick look at the agenda. Hit some of the events and qualifying, which most of you have kind of gotten to at this point, which is good. Uh, the schedule for this coming weekend, facility layout with the new boathouse all done, and we'll be using that. Um, some logistical stuff, some competition reminders, uh, some rules reminders, and then we'll have our, our Q&A session there. Uh, just a heads up for you, the games management team for this weekend um, and championship weekend. Um, is here. Uh, we got a lot of folks that you should recognize the names before. A few new people, um, but most of these names are, are pretty pretty usual year in year out kayaking team. Um, if you have any questions, this should hopefully give you an idea of who to ask. You can always come to myself. Um, Steve Bennett will be on site. Uh, Mike Sarnowski will be on site. We'll have enough folks that if you have a question, grab one of us and we'll take care of you on time trials weekend this weekend or championships weekend for sure. And with that being said, um, for those of you who are at summer games. Um, we will be wearing the same uh, shirts that we had at Summer Games. And also, anybody who has a radio, don't hesitate to um, ask a question there. If they don't know the answer, they'll be happy to try to find an answer for you. Uh, again, just a reminder of our, our events that we offer. Um, we have the 100-meter, the and then we have the 100-meter doubles in Traditional and Unified. 200-meter, 200-meter doubles, Traditional Unified. 500-meter, 500-meter doubles, Traditional Unified. The 1K and the 1K doubles traditional and unified for time trials. The way we run it and the way we are gonna to continue to run it is that we will initially run a 200 and 500 meter time trial event where we will get a 200 number uh, a qualifying time for your athletes along with a 500 qualifying time. If an athlete is only doing the 200 part of that 500, more than likely they will be in the second group of the 200, 100. And in that case, we will get them there. Um, and then moving on to that second part of the 200, 100 meter time trial that we'll hold in the second half of the day. If you have any athletes that are just doing the 100 meter, they will pull off. Um, they do not have to do the full 200 meter. Um, additionally, a note for everybody um, is when we run the 200, 500 first, we'll run the doubles portion prior to all the singles racers. And then when we, when we move to the 200-100 portion, we will run the doubles portion before the singles for that as well. Um, one final note on time trials and events that we are looking to run. This year, we are looking to run a legitimate 1K time trial at the end of the day. So if you have 1K racers, um, please do stick around. We will give you a definitive yes or no on if it's going to be a legitimate time trial um, timed race by we're hoping by midday if not sooner um but please do have your 1k athletes sticking around because we really would love to do that kayaking entry process um and eligibility uh for athletes obviously athletes and partners must uh participate in this upcoming time trial to be eligible for state games on the 24th um in addition they must attend one other qualifying competition. A lot of you have already held in-house qualifying competitions, which is great. Um, and I thank you all for getting in your sanction forms and all that information. And all of you that have also sent in qualifying times after your in-house qualifiers, because that has really helped us set up um, time trials as well. So I appreciate that. Um, 
the events that your athletes can enter. Again, we changed it a little bit this year that athletes and partners may enter in up to three events total. Um, I, I've seen one or two delegations I think are trying that this year. Um, I know three events can be a lot for some of our athletes and they may still need to build up for that, but we're offering that opportunity now. Um, the biggest thing with the three events is that athletes that are in the 100 meter cannot be in the 500 meter or the 1K event. Again, our 100 meters are fundamentals event. Um, so realistically, if you have an athlete that can do a 500 or a 1K, they're not a fundamentals kayaker. Um, but one thing that has changed that we mentioned in the preseason is this year to promote doubles participation a little bit more, we are offering that athletes um, can do the 500 individual race and they could do a 500 doubles if they wanted to. I don't believe that we've had anybody do that this year. Um, but again, we will continue to push that as an opportunity for extra growth in the doubles category. Time trial schedule. Um, we started off at 7.30 in the morning with that first drop-off um, for kayaks. Uh, everybody was sent the drop-off schedule in one of the last emails. I will send it again before um, time trials, just as a reminder, um, again, based on the times that you've been slotted, please bring in your trailers at that time. Um, if there's an issue with that time for you, please contact me, Zach Cintron, as soon as possible um, so we can kind of work that out with other delegations to see if we can get something better for you. Um, volunteers are going to start registering um, at 8, 8.30. We definitely want them registered by 8.30. Uh, delegation check-in is going to start at 9 o'clock, um, and because of the 9 o'clock delegation check-in, um, 8.45 to 8.25, we have our course preview. The course will be open for coaches and athletes to preview. Please remember, if you are going to have athletes previewing the course, a coach must go out on the course with them. Um, we will have safety boaters ready to go, but we always want coaches out there with their athletes in the course preview time frame. Um, Additionally, with the course preview, we want everybody off the water by 925. Um, we're going to have a coaches meeting at 930 at the little shore staging area, which is kind of that beach area uh, where the, the pebbles stop and the, the sand begins. Um, we'll have our coaches meeting. We'll have all the kayaks off the water at, at 930. We're going to run a very short, abbreviated opening ceremonies, um, you know, athlete oath, uh, pledge of allegiance and the, the basic normal things that we would do for opening the games, uh, but we want to kick off competition. Um, this schedule is wrong. We will update this competition. We want to kick off right after 930. So we're going to get kayaks off the water at 925, quick coaches meeting at 930, and we want to start competition by 940, 945 if we can do it. Um, again, as a reminder, the order for races that we're looking to run this weekend, we want to run our 200 meter and 500 meter time trial first. Um, we will then be running our 200, 100 meter races is our second grouping of time trials races. Um, and then we are going to push again for that 1K um, race for time trials to get qualifying times. We also have offered it as an idea as a course preview if we do not have enough time for a full 1K race. Um, additionally, just a small note for you, we've scheduled in a, a small window between the 200 and 500 meter races and the 200, 100 meter races. So our folks on the water that are volunteering can come in, use the restroom, get something to eat and those kind of things. Um, but we are not doing a specific lunch break. Lunch will be distributed starting at 11. Um, and at that point, we will ask a coach, a HOD, whoever is leading your delegation to come up and we will give you all of your lunches that you requested and put in an order for um, directly to that coach to bring back to your delegation. Um, the goal is that everything's wrapped up by three o'clock um, and hopefully everybody's had a great day at that point and we're all in good shape. Um, here's the kayaking drop off schedule again. Um, I know that Frederick reached out and there's a little tweak to that, uh, but at this point, this is what we're going with for the time frame. If there's an issue, again, please email me and we can work something out. Um, we want to get everybody in these time slots as much as we can stick to that, um, just because there is a, a particular flow to getting trailers back in and unloaded and then getting the trailers moving out. 
um, that we just don't want to congest the uh, main roadway too much, having people wait on the side of the road. And last year, those of you, um, this is Steve Bennett. I worked with you guys, and we, and we all did that very well. So similar stuff this year. Um, again, just be patient, but uh, we'll get everyone in and out of there. But, uh, yeah, stick, stick to the schedule as much as possible. <clears throat> Here's a, a visual for you for the idea of unloading the trailer this year. So you, as you can see in this Google picture, the boathouse is there. The new boathouse is there. It's ready to go. It's open. Um, so the, the back end is a little bit thinner than usual. Um, but so if you see that red line coming in off of Cross Street there, we're hoping that you can pull up, back the trailer down, unload the trailer, and then when you're coming out, the green line is what you want to follow. And you want to follow it left past the, the new boathouse in front of the old boathouse. And more than likely, we are going to try to park most of the trailers where you see that thick blue line that says trailers. If for some reason we run into a, an issue with having enough space for trailers there, we may move some of the later trailers into the armory next door. But I strongly believe that we are going to have enough room, um, thanks to the, the additions and the, the space opening up for grass again, um, right there at the boathouse. Um, again, Steve will be there kind of helping everybody offload with the process. Um, you have your folks offload, and Steve will help you get to where you need to be. Course map, course map has not changed. Course map is still the same as in the past. Um, it's the same layout, the same lanes. Uh, your red stars are your safety kayakers. Again, the yellow lines are your course lanes. The pink circles are the buoy markers for the 100 and 200. Uh, and that green slash yellowish rectangle down at the end is the stationary uh, platoon boat for timing. We also have the shore timing for um, the 100 meter. And then we also have people supporting down at the dock at the condos that you see at the bottom of the screen there. Venue map, to give you an idea of where things are going to be um, during the day of the event. Um, of course, competitions out there on the water. Um, behind the new boathouse now, there is space for parking, um, but there is not unlimited space and there's not enough space to grant everyone parking in there. Um, so we've gone and tried to take a strategic approach here. I sent out an email a few days ago to head coaches um, and area directors and area director support with parking passes for folks in your delegation that may need that parking. Right now we're limiting that parking to two people per delegation with that parking pass. And I've asked that you please email me the two folks that are gonna need it. I've only gotten back two or three emails with names of folks. Um, so please, 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 try to get those names back because we will have a, a public safety officer um, at the front of that parking lot helping everyone get situated. And the more information we can pass along to them, the easier that they can help park your folks. And at the same time, the more pleasant the experience will be. Um, additionally, you can see the blue area in the grass there. The blue area in the grass is where all the delegations will be. There'll be plenty of room for delegation tents. So you guys can set up in there. If everybody has two or three tents, there will be plenty of room for you guys to spread out and have a, uh, a good setup for your delegation for Saturday. Um, additionally, we will have signage to put on your easy ups or whatever you end up bringing um, to kind of mark where your delegation is so folks can see or we can even see if we need to, to grab a head coach or something. Um, there are restrooms that are available at the boathouse. The new boathouse has two individual restrooms right on the deck of the boathouse and then there are other traditional multi-use bathrooms within the boathouse we are asking that folks use the outdoor ones as much as possible the indoor ones if you are dry um we you are allowed to use those we will have wet mats in there to to make sure people aren't slipping and falling um, but indoors is a laminate floor and if your feet are a little wet we, we are, we're worried about your safety at the end of the day um, Additionally, there will be porta pots available. Um, most likely, it's great access for the athletes because it's right by shore staging. Um, if you can see the little yellow area um, above the competition shoreline area, those are where the porta pots will be. Not to say that they are only for access for athletes, but um, primarily, a lot of we have that there. So, if we have a situation where an athlete at staging needs to use it, it's really quick, it's really accessible. Um, you will also see light blue areas with green lines through them. That is where we will be staging and placing kayaks for the weekend. Um, 
we will have delegation signs in those areas for where those delegations will offload their kayaks. Uh, we're hoping that we can have a good setup and a nice spread out there so we're not stacking kayaks on top of each other next to each other, um, and we can get them easy when we need to get them. Um, and then finally, the most important thing for uh, coaches and folks on the line here is that in the very front part of the boathouse towards the top of the image there, there's a black rectangle. Um, that will be a very multi-purpose area throughout both weekends. Um, this weekend, primarily, that is where we will hold our small opening ceremonies, which we will also use for championships to hold our full opening ceremonies. Um, additionally, delegation check-in will be on the front end of the porch there. And then once ceremonies are cleaned up, we will have lunch distribution from there as well that your head coach or whoever you designate from your delegation to come get lunch. Um, we will also stage the control center there if you have any needs that pop up. Um, control Center will be there for your access as well. Registration and check-in. Um, again, each delegation will designate a head coach or one individual to come up to registration and check-in where I was just talking about and get their, their packets. Um, it's nearest to the kayaking load in there, again. Um, while your HOD or head coach or whoever's picking up your delegation packet is doing that, Please have your athletes, your unified partners, your other volunteers helping unload boats um, and working with Steve and the other operations folks to place them in your assigned delegation area for the kayaks. Um, again, each kayak should be labeled with the names of the kayakers who will use it. Um, if you can duct tape and label them prior to arrival, that's phenomenal. <laughs> if you do not have that ability, we will have duct tapes and Sharpies provided on site. Um, so that is additionally something that your volunteers, unified partners, athletes can be doing while your HOD is picking up their packet. Hey, um, Zach, we have a question. If you could go back to the slide that shows kind of the layout where the boat ho boathouse is. Um, the question was, where where can spectators go? Mm -hmm. um, if you could explain where the spectator viewing areas and that kind of stuff is, that'd be great. Great question. Uh, spectators are, of course, allowed in that delegation area. Um, all along the waterfront there will be great spectator areas, especially for the 100, 200. Um, you'll definitely get to see all the starts from there. Additionally, this year, the only thing we are using the pavilion for this year is volunteer check-in. So after all the volunteers check-in, about 830, that'll be a great spot for spectators to go and, one, get in some shade if it's a, a little bit of a warm, sunny day, which Right now, the weather looks great, um, but it's also another good spot to, to see the competitions, um, you know, where they'll stage the athletes and where they'll get them around the dock to start. Uh, so those are your two primary spectator areas. Okay, going back forward. Course inspections. Um, coaching and athletes, uh, if you want to inspect the uh, 1K course, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, you're more than welcome to spectate and take a look at all the other uh, courses that we have set up with the buoys and stuff in place. Again, we're encouraging you between 9.05, 9.25, that essentially that 9 to 9.30 window is what we're recommending um, with a reminder that the coaches meeting is at 9.30 on shore. So more than likely you will have to have your athletes off because you will not be on the water at that point. Um, again, a reminder. If you have athletes going out to inspect the courts, a coach must be on the water at all times. Um, again, it's a safety thing, but we also want to make sure that you're seeing the course as well. Um, coaches should plan on using their own personnel to launch kayaks, especially for this course preview um, section. All of our volunteers at this point will be finishing up getting their orientations, learning where they need to be at that point, and getting set up to run the competition. Um, so we won't necessarily have folks to give you a hand to launch a bunch of kayaks at that point. Again, all kayakers must be off the water at the designated time, which we're saying is 925. Um, there are no exceptions because as soon as we get that coaches meeting going and over, like I said, we want to turn right over into competition. We want to start that 200, 500 meter uh, time trial. Coaches meeting, again. Coaches meeting Saturday morning, 9.30 at the shore staging, the beach area where it changes over to sand. Um, each delegation must have their head coach there. Um, we're going to give you some similar information to what we're giving you right now, but if there's any updates, that's where we're going to give it to you 
is right there. Um, if there's any updates with how we're going to run events, where we're going to distribute launch for, you guys know the drill. Sometimes things get tweaked, um, but we will give you the very most recent details at that point, at that 930 meeting. So please have head coaches there. Parking. So we have some different options for parking. Um, parking, again, is available in Wilmer Park next door. Um, and additionally, there's an old train station that everybody passes coming down South Cross Street that'll be off to your right. And it's right across the street from the park. You will have access to park in that parking lot and the grass area behind that parking lot. Um, it's not that far of a walk. It's essentially the same walk as Wilmer Park. Uh, but that is where most of our general parking in is. So if you have any families that are coming out to watch for the day as well, that's a very good place for them to park, not only for the sake of um, its defined parking and safe parking, but additionally, they'll be e able to access that nice and easy. Um, again, please park all vehicles behind designated signs and cones. Don't block anyone in. Um, kayak trailer parking will be along the construction fence like I showed you in that one slide. Um, and if we need to, we will spill over into the armory parking lot that's on the other side of the grass area at the moment. Um, again, all kayaks must be unloaded into the staging area um, and trailers moved from the trailer to the trailer parking designated areas. Um, Alan, we're going to open your phone line right now so you can ask your specific question about um, the uh, spectators along the uh, shoreline. Alan, you're open. Okay, historically before the construction, the the best place to view the, the competition for those people so inclined was to line up along the shore that parallels the, the straight part of the course. And when, when construction started, that was no longer available. So my question is, now that construction is completed, can people uh, be along the shore that parallels the course? Good question, Alan. Um, so from what you see back in the, the venue map photo again, um, you can see towards the water line, there's that short run uh, that runs along the water. That will definitely be open for spectators to view. The continuation of the grass area below that on the map that I don't have in the, the photo itself, they're still working on building that science building next door. Um, I will make no promises on this. I heard that there's a chance that the fencing may be down by championships, but I believe going into this weekend, we will not have access to the additional long end um, of the grass area for spectators like you were talking about, Alan. So at the moment, it looks like we will have probably half the area that we've had in the past. Thank you. Gotcha. Al, I'm going to open your. Al Jank, you are open. Okay, thanks. Uh, just to follow up on Alan's uh, question about that, when we had our sports management team meeting out there a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, you had talked about the fact that that area that, we ju that you just described would be open. But a lot of that uh, br the brushy area and the, and the reeds and stuff right along that shoreline have grown up quite a bit in the last couple of years. Have those been trimmed down? Uh, from what I understand from Jack, that those have been trimmed down and we will be good going into this weekend. Um, I believe from what I was understanding from our meeting too, is definitely from that top area where it's closest to the boathouse down to the curve is good. Um, I will check, I will be out there Thursday and I will do a double check on the straightaway, how much of that is cleared. I can't promise that the portion after the section that we're showing on the map is going to be clear, but from the discussion that we've all had, up to that point should be clear. Okay. I have other questions, but they can all wait till the end. Okay. Thanks, Al. All right. To catch back up here, let's find our last spot. Parking, delegation spaces. Uh, again, to touch base on delegation spaces, we were just looking at the map. That whole blue section that is technically east of the <laughs> boathouse um, that overlooks the course will be an area for pop-up tents. We're not using the park again this year because we have access to be closer to the competition area 
Um, so we are going to use that this year. Um, again, delegations are expected to share their space, play nice with each other. Um, you know, if you have a couple pop-up tents, get them as close as you possibly can to get each other. Um, leave room for your neighbors, and everybody will be in good shape going into the, the day. Um, Again, I'm going to have hanging delegation signs for each delegation that we will be bringing that you can put up on one of your easy ups or pop up tents, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so that'll give not only us an idea of who is where, but your athletes and your coaches and volunteers as the day gets busy, everybody knows exactly where they need to go back to for home base. And if you do partake in one of the signs, make sure we get those signs back. We use those for multiple competitions. So we'd appreciate your support with that. Peer access, medical service. Uh, access to the peer or the docs, that's competition only. We want competition personnel, coaches and athletes who need to swap kayaks um, are only on the peer when a swap is required. We're trying to keep that as open for our competition and staging folks as possible so they can work their magic and getting everyone out there and set up so everybody can have a really good experience. If something does come up that you feel the need as a head coach that you need to be out there for something, please come to me, we can have a chat, and we can see what we can do for you. Additionally, we will have medical, we will have two medical folks. Um, they will be located on the deck of the boathouse near the control center. Um, and one of the two medical personnel will occasionally roam the delegation area, uh, the staging area, just to check on folks, make sure everyone's okay, and if anybody needs anything. Food services. Um, thank you all for getting your lunch orders in. I really appreciate you guys got those in. Um, they were in very timely, and it made my life a lot easier, and it made Redner's Market, who's doing our lunches, they greatly appreciate it. They were very excited to have those in. Um, box lunches will be provided. Again, if you need a reminder of what the lunch contents will be, it'll either be a turkey or ham sandwich with cheese, lettuce, tomato, and whatever um, condiments you'd like to put on it. Uh, those will also come with a bag of chips, a clementine, and a water. Um, so it'll be a nice, well-rounded lunch there. And if you have a gluten-free or need vegetarian, it'll be a nice gluten-free salad, salad dressing, clementine, water. Um, so we'll have some nice lunches uh, going into time trials. Additionally, the same process and the same lunches will be available for championships. And so the date to get in your lunch orders, I will send out an email reminder as well but the 16th is the date and the deadline to get in lunch orders for championships. Again, as a reminder, delegations will pick up their lunches from the lunch distribution area and one of your members of your delegation, if you have a big delegation and you need to send two folks with two hands, I understand. But the main idea is to have one or two folks taking all your lunches back to your home base area in the delegation area. Lunch will be open at 11, um, 11.30, will be a a second call if people haven't gotten their lunches and things are busy. Yeah, and a reminder, I know we've had um, uh, with coaches and um, delegation members and everything, there is excitement of, where, hey, where are the lunches? Where are the lunches? We will make the calls and let you guys know when they're coming. So right at 11 or 10.58, don't come running. Where's the lunches? Where are the lunches? Uh, we will let you guys know when they're ready for pickup. Family services and uh, registration for championships. We will have a family hospitality table. Um, Debbie Credito, as usual, will be, will be at that location. We'll have information about Special Olympics in general in the surrounding area and the community. Um, I will know and please pass on to your families to plan on packing their own lunches for time trials. Um, we are working on a potential food purchasing option for championships. That is still to be determined. But for time trials, there will not be an on-site food purchasing option for families. Um, so if you can definitely pass that information along, um, even if it's the morning of when families show up, that will make life a lot easier. And it will hopefully prepare them if they need to go off-site into Chestertown, which isn't too far, um, to pick up lunch options that they know ahead of time and they're not disappointed. Registration for championships. The results from time trials, we will advance um, to the championships. Uh, we will take care of that for you, but with that said, we will send out a first delegation report after time trials so that you can review that all the folks from time trials that got time, one, got a time in there, two, they're still doing those same events, and three, that nothing has changed, that we don't need to scratch somebody ahead of time. Um, 
as a reminder, when it comes to the events that your athletes are doing for time trials, if they are at time trials and say you have them in a 200 and a 500, and that 500 just doesn't feel right, doesn't go right for that athlete that day, and you decide that, you know what, we really need to put that athlete in the 200 and 100, those are the most appropriate events for them for championships, that is fine. But you need to let us know at the uh, control center, Mike Sarnowski, Kristen Mullins will both be there. They need to know before you leave time trials. If you let us know after, there is much less of a chance, to be quite honest, that we're going to be able to make that change while advancing everything. So again, if you realize you need to make a change for athletes' events, please let us know before you leave time trials this weekend. Um, exactly. with, yes. Uh, this Mike, just as a reminder with folks for that as well, uh, using that example, if someone's moving down from the 200-500 to the 100-200, they have to get in and do the 100-200 uh, uh, time trial so we can get a time for their 100. Um, the, the folks in staging can be flexible. They would go in at the very end, um, uh, but uh, we, we can't add them into the 100 if we don't get a time for them. Uh, and we won't, for the, the folks when they're doing the 200, 500, we don't have timers set up to also get a 100 time. Um, uh, so they will need to do that other time trial. Thanks for that that reminder, Mike. Um, as as to lead off of what Mike's saying as well, the 200, 500 is also first for part of that reason. So hopefully as we get through the 200, 500, you make that realization and we can potentially run them in the next 200, 100 set if that athlete needs to bump down and get a 100. Again, let us know as soon as possible. Um, technically, the deadline is the end of the day, but the sooner that you know that you want to make that change, the quicker we can adapt to accommodate that change for you. Um, again, we're going to try to get a report with start times out during the week of championships so you guys have an idea of what to plan for for the week of championships as well. Weather information. Um, I got one email already on weather, and Everything looks good, so I'm not going to jinx it. We're not going to jinx it. The weather looks very nice this weekend. Um, I think right now it's calling for mid-80s, a little cloudy here or there, so we may get a, a little break from the sun, too. Weather looks very good. With that said, if we get a crazy storm that rolls in the night before or something like that, if it's moderately raining um, the day of the event, we will still move forward. If it's moderately raining, but the water conditions get to a point where it's too hard to kayak in, we may pause competition. We may postpone competition. If lightning occurs, you guys all know competition stops immediately. Everyone gets out of the water, and people are going to the shelter, which is the boathouse, which is your car, which is the pavilion, which is the deck of the boathouse. We have a lot of space to take shelter now with the new boathouse. With all of that said, if competition gets postponed to the point where we cannot continue, we will not roll it into Sunday. We will roll time trials into the beginning portion of championships. So we'll have a little bit of an extended schedule for that day. You will get an updated schedule, even though the championship schedule is currently out in the event guide. You will all get an updated version of that if we go to that. If we need to make a call on postponing and or canceling time trials prior to the start of time trials. The goal is always we would love to have it the day before. Um, we would love to have it the evening before to give you a heads up so you know before you you know potentially go to sleep for the night and don't wake up to a surprise email um, if weather's changing. With that said, if everything looks good and I wake up in Chestertown on Saturday morning and a, a tsunami comes in or you know we have a hurricane out of nowhere, then I'm going to have to be making phone calls at, you know, five, six in the morning to all of your head coaches and or area directors. Um, it'll go to those people first, um, and I will try to get you through there. If I do not get you via phone immediately, you will catch an email as soon as that phone call is over. I will send an email. Um, so, again, the game plan is if we need to make a weather call, we would like to make it on Friday. If weather looks good and we get smacked by a storm on Saturday morning, It'll be very, very early Saturday morning. Um, so if you're seeing bad weather when you wake up on Saturday morning, please check your email. Please check your phone for voicemails as well. Again, weather forecast as of yesterday, it looks really good. It looks really nice. It shouldn't be too hot. Um, the water should be warm enough. We should be in really good shape for this weekend. Um, and we monitor the weather. I, I'm checking the weather app every 
six hours at this point because I'm, I'm want to make sure the weather's the best possible scenario, even though I can't control it, to set you guys up for success for that weekend and to give you a heads up far enough out. Um, again, if there's a big weather emergency and we need to make a call real quick, phone calls will go out to head coaches, area directors, followed up by an email if we cannot get a phone call through. Some rules, reminders, and stuff going into the event. Um, if an athlete or partner fully travels outside of their lane um, during the competitions without impeding on an, or uh, another athlete or partner, a five-second penalty will be enforced for that event. Um, and additionally, an athlete and partner must attempt to return to the proper lane if they do go out of their lane and must complete the race in the assigned lane. If an athlete and partner is fully outside of their lane at the finish, it'll be considered a DQ. Um, again, we're trying to avoid DQs as much as possible as a time trial. We want to get good times on our main course for championships, um, but we are still going to adhere to the rules. And if that finish is not completed the proper way, we will DQ someone. If an athlete or partner crosses the lane barrier and impedes on another athlete or partner, it'll be grounds for a disqualification through the protest procedure. And an athlete or partner that was impeded has the option of starting the race at a later time for a proper score. We will rerun that athlete to get a proper score. Um, again, a reminder, if you have a protest, you will have access to protest forms, not only in your um, packet that you get, but they're also always at the control center. Um, or if you see me, I'm running around, I always have protest forms on me as well. If you need to launch a protest, it needs to be done within 30 minutes of the event that you are protesting. Um, just a reminder when it comes to protest rules and regulations there. Rules for the 1K. Um, in the 1K, the kayak that is in the lead always has the right of way. Uh, the kayak behind must yield to the leading kayak. Again, we kind of run it similar to cycling in that road race aspect. Um, so that that's the rules for leading. Uh, kayakers. Um, heats will be uh, in groups of five based off of qualifying times that we've submitted. Um, and again, I thank you all for getting in qualifying times. I know that was a, a change from last year and a little bit of a late change, but you guys adjusted very, very well and helped us out tremendously by getting those times in. Uh, some reminders on disqualification. Competitors that are disqualified uh, will be disqualified as noted in the previous slide for the reasons that we mentioned in there. Reruns of the event will occur if needed or requested by the head coach. Um, again, impeding on an athlete's initial run will be grounds for a rerun for the athlete that was impeded on. Um, maximum effort rule will be enforced upon a protest being filed by the head coach or uh, an athlete adversely affected. Again, please have your head coaches submit protests. Um, approval is not an automatic thing, and we'll factor in conditions on the final decision. We have our sports rule committee that has multiple resolution options, not simply just disqualification. Um, and if you are interested in seeing who's on the sports rules committee for this event, please check the event guide. It is in there. Um, protests must be filed to the uh, control center registration within 30 minutes, not 15 minutes, of results being posted for that event. Um, a vote. Uh, Results will be posted near the control center or will be available at the control center if you are curious. Divisions and competition schedules. Uh, divisions and competition schedules, we will distribute them um, no later than Thursday, the night of this event. Um, I am hoping, quite honestly, to get them out even tomorrow. Worst case scenario, you will get them Thursday night. Um, so you have an idea of what divisions your athletes are in and where they're going to be running, um, their bib numbers and all that kind of stuff. Delegations will receive their packet on site, including registration uh, reports, bibs, labels for the events, uh, for the athletes and partners and all that other stuff to equip you for the day with the information that you need, especially in a physical paper form. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is also available on the coaches resource page as we finish these items, we tend to put them up there as well, so you have a digital resource as well. Courses, all the courses will be virtually identical um, as the past in last year. We'll have the three lanes set up. Um, there is the 1K course inspection that we're looking to run. 
Um, and the course inspection is running from, again, 8.45 you can get in the water when your coach is ready. If you guys have your kayaks unloaded and can get them in the water, um, that's fine. More likely 9 o'clock to 9.25 is going to be that window for the course inspection. Um, all kayakers will be directed to come off the water again. 9.25, 9.30, we want all kayakers off the water so we can do our coaches meeting and then get right into our time trials there. Um, if you arrive late and are interested in doing a, a, a course inspection, it may not happen. More than likely, it probably won't happen. Um, just because, again, we want to get rolling right there at 9.40, 9.45. We want competition happening right away. Uniforms, again. Ooh, got to go back. Uniforms. Competitors must wear shirts and shorts and pants during all practices and competitions. Um, you know, I know sometimes a little bit of a, a leisure kayak trip, people want to take their shirt off, get a little bit of a tan, not a competition. That's not what we're looking for. Um, again, everybody needs to wear a PSD Type 3 with the whistle attached. Um, again, a life vest, if, if we don't all know what a PSD is. Uh, must be worn by all athletes and partners while on the water or on the dock. Even if they're just standing on the dock, they need to have a life vest on. Um, helmets are optional. Some people wear them, some do not. I definitely recommend a hat, um, something to cover the athletes while they're out there because it is hot, it is sunny, you're on the water. Sunglasses as well, they help. Um, and then some of the other optional items are water shoes, polarized sunglasses, um, always recommended for athletes to have. Equipment regulations. Um, all kayaks are required to have the flotation devices. Um, inflatable beach balls are, are what are used the most in the stern and or the bow. Um, this will be checked as the kayaks come in to make sure they're all in good shape. Again, this is safety for athletes and our partners. We want to make sure they have the safest competition possible. Um, so we want to make sure they all have their flotation devices. Um, all kayaks should be marked with their appropriate size and make. Again, with the duct tape, if it's RA on the boat, that's great. Um, but if you need to, please mark it with the duct tape when you mark your athletes' uh, names on the boats as well. Um, each athlete and partner must qualify and compete in a boat of a similar size and make. Uh, if they do change boats going into the championships, they need to compete in a boat within six inches, and it must be within six inches smaller. A, a longer boat is obviously going to give a competitive advantage, so we do not want them racing in a you know, a 12 foot kayak and then they're showing up in, in a 13.5. Um, you know, we're going to have an issue there at that point. Each athlete and partner must qualify and compete during the same style and same paddle. Keep your paddles consistent. I think most athletes want to keep their paddle consistent in the first place, um, but that's just a reminder that they need to use the same paddle for qualifying competition as the championship that they're planning to use. Um, again, label your kayaks with your kayaker's names of who will use it. Um, not only does that help your kayakers know which one they're in, you know which one they're in, it helps our stagers tremendously. So we can say, hey, we need the boat for X athlete. They can find that name within the delegation that we're telling them to find, and they're rocking and rolling and moving along. On water safety, again, every effort will be made to assist athletes and unify partners in lining up kayaks at the start line. Uh, Mike Myers, who works our start line, and his volunteers, do a great job there, so they'll take care of your athletes and unify partners as much as possible. Um, but all athletes and partners should be trained and able to maneuver their boat at the start line to set themselves. Coaches are not allowed on the water unless previously designated by a, um, the competition director, myself, Steve Bennett, Mike Sarnowski, um, any of us, if we've had a conversation or the day of we have a conversation, that'll be the only time that coaches are allowed on the water. Um, Athletes and partners must remain in the kayak at all times while on the water. Legs must be in the kayak at all times. If they fall out, that's a different story, but then there are means of getting back in that we will talk about as well. Um, some rules reminders going in here. Again, the start of the race is always racers ready, followed by the sound of an air horn. Um, we will have the air horns, and for individuals with hearing impairments, the starter will drop a white flag to indicate the start of the race along with the air horn. Um, a red flag raised at either the start or finish will indicate an infraction at that lane. Um, no coaching from the shoreline is permitted from coaches, assistant coaches, family me members, spectators, delegation member members. Specific paddling instructions should not be called to the athletes and partners is what we're talking about. 
We're not saying that you can't cheer for your athletes. You know, go, Jimmy, you're doing great. Um, those kind of things, that's fine. But we're not calling out specific things. Paddle faster. You know, those are the kind of things that we are not having anybody call out from the shoreline. That's considered coaching. If an athlete or partner does fall out of their kayak during the race, they will be given the opportunity to re-enter the kayak and resume the race. Safety boats uh, will assist athletes and partners who do not wish to try to continue. With that said, the, the timing for safety boaters, step one, the safety boaters have the discretion to go and help an athlete if they think that athlete is really struggling and they need the assistance. Um, with that said, they will give the athlete no more than three minutes to get back in the kayak and going. At that point, at the three minute point, they're for sure pulling athletes or partners from the water. This is everything that we have to help you guys. We're open for questions, answers at this point. I think Al still has some questions, so I'm going to open it up first to Al. Al, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Let me flip my page over here and make sure I cover them. Okay. Um, I don't know if Jack is there or not. I just need a reminder again of uh, looking at a photo that he sent us last year. I believe that the buoys along each of the lanes are red except for the ones at the 100, 200, and 500 marks, in which case they're a bigger buoy and they're a pale yellow, if memory serves me correct. I just wanted to confirm that. I believe, um, Case, let me let me see, let me open up one other line and check to see if Jack is there. Okay. Let me see. Uh, Please. Jack is stated he's on the phone, but I don't know that he can speak. I've, Lisa, I've opened up your line. Is Jack potentially with you tonight? Lisa, you may be muted. Al, from what I understand, especially since we just got in 35 brand new yellow buoys, the setup is going to be the same. Um, okay. I, and if there is any change, I am making a note. Um, I will check when we set up the course on Thursday, and if there's any major changes to the traditional setup of the course based on buoy color or anything at all, I will pass it along via email. Okay. And then along with that, I just wanted to check to make sure that those finish line buoys for the 500 meters are going to get moved into proper position uh, when they uh, set, set things up for the 1,000 meter time trial and uh, preview and then race at comp you know for competition um, then my next question has to do with the 200 500 and 200 100 qualifying things just just to repeat what we talked about before uh, for those people who are doing the 100 and the 200 meter events they're just going to do a run of the 200 meter, you know, out to the 200 meter finish line, there'll be timers that will get their intermediate 100 meter time. Is that correct? That is 100% correct. And the same goes for the 200, 500. They'll right. run the whole 500, but we will have people capturing at the 200, their 200 time as well. So they only need to do one run there. Yeah. Now here's here's my thing. I have four people who are going to do the, the 1K. Mm -hmm. Three of them are going to also do the 500. So if there, you know, if there isn't a 1K uh, time trial on Saturday, they'll be okay. But I have a person who's doing the 200 meter and the 1K. Gotcha. So, um, and, and and I know you said that if if they're not doing the 500, they'll do their 200 meter run with the 200 100, the second group, the 200 and 100 meter. But that leaves him. In, you know that leaves him without a qualifying run for the 1K if we don't do a 1K time trial. Hey Al, uh, for your athlete that's only doing the 200 meter and the 1K, um, could we be safe and have that athlete do a 500? They'll capture their 200 time. They'll capture a 500 time. And in the strange case that we don't get to that 1K full qualifier of getting times. We'll have that 500 just like everybody else. Do you think that's possible? Yeah. Okay. We'll do the 200 and the 500 group time trial for him then. 
Yeah, yeah. If if you could do me any, a favor and email me and pass along that name, I could look it up in GMS, but you know it quicker than I will. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And then I think I ha oh, um, so for Saturday's time trials, um, uh, I have an athlete. Let's let's say I have an athlete uh, who does not finish in their assigned lane. You know, on say the two hundred meter, the two the two hundred one hundred, they don't finish. So they're going to be. D, uh, they're going to be DQ'd and, and they're going to be only competing for a participation ribbon come competition. Is that correct? That That is correct. If they get disqualified at the time trials, they are participating still at championships to get the experience and the opportunity, but it will be for participation. Okay, that's fine. I have one request, even one, even if people, uh, if they, if they uh, can I'm finish. Sorry. Uh, Al, a clarification with that. Yeah, Mike. If Let's assume that it's the 200, 500 where they do that. If they got a clean 200, they would still be able to compete for uh, award in the 200. Right. They would only have been disqualified from the 500. Okay. So, so and similarly for the 100, 200. Yeah. So if they yeah. if they pass the 200 mark cleanly, we've got a good time. They didn't DQ in that. They're fine. It'll only be the 500 that that's affecting. Yeah. The only thing that I would ask is even in that kind of a situation, hopefully that somebody will capture that time uh, so that we uh, we as coaches get a sense of, you know, what their time, you know, could have been, you know, had they mm -hmm. stayed in their lane. Yeah, George definitely does. I mean, unless something really wacky happens where there's no legitimate time that yeah. could be got, George, record, George has his team record everything. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, that takes care of my question. Thank you, Jack. I've opened up your line. Are you there? Do we have you now? Yeah, I've been yes. trying to get on this thing all day. I've been on the phone because I can hear what's going on, but I couldn't uh, get on with the computer for some reason. I finally got on. Well, we got you for the important part here, Jack. Um, can you answer Al's question about the buoy setup? Uh, initially, he was talking about red and yellow buoys. Is we that the play out for them? We have yellow buoys, three-foot diameter buoys, at the 100-meter finish, 200-meter finish, and red buoys at the 500-meter finish. Great. Um, let's see what else. Um, that was great. Oh. Um, parking, the construction fence will come down next week. So the construction fence is still going to be there uh, through this weekend. And then they will remove the construction fence. Uh, but whether or not we'll be able to park further over where their parking lot and trailers are right now um, is questionable because it'll be new sod. Um, Al's question about going out along the, the, the water line. Uh, I don't know how much trimming they're going to get done. Um, you can go all the way out to the 100 meter. If you want to go out to the 100 meter point and set up tents out there to watch, uh, more power to you. Uh, you just won't be able to drive out there um, other than uh, uh, the people who are manning the 100 meter uh, finish line point. Um, let's see, what was the other question that came up? Uh, the other one was um, for moving the 500 meter buoys for the 1K into the, the position that they're needed in. Okay, my suggestion, and I was going to bring it up uh, with you, Zach, on uh, Thursday, is that we take the, the uh, 500 meter buoy off the pole in the right hand lane going down mm -hmm. we run people down that lane and leave the buoys at the bottom and they would go all the way around all the buoys at the bottom of the course and come up on the outside of the course uh the other way is to remove the buoys from both poles and just have them go around the inside buoys go down um for instance lane one and come back in lane three Mm -hmm. uh, however, then when they get back to the dock, they've got to cross over to get to the um, finish line. Let's, 
let's have that final conversation on Thursday, Jack. When we're out there, we'll we'll take a look and make a final determination. And Thursday, when I send out some information, um, or Friday, when I send out some information, we'll send that out with some clarity. And we'll reiterate what we are planning on doing at the coaches meeting on site Saturday as well. Okay. Now, uh, another thing, Al, you're familiar with the course. Um, we're going to have a yellow string on the outside to the left. A red string, which you'll see tomorrow, is in place. Then over to the right of that red string will be another yellow string of buoys. And then on the outside, on the right side, shoreline side, will be the uh, red buoys again. Uh, as far as, as marker buoys, uh, do you have any problem with that? Um, not quite sure I tracked all that. Um, so, so you're saying that the the right side. If you're looking, if you're looking down the course, you're looking down the course, okay? From the dock. Yep. You're going to have yellow, red, yellow, red. Okay. Okay. Got the, it. Reason, the reason is I've already set a line of red buoys um, for the um, for what we did for our time trials, and I set that, and it's going to stay there. Okay. So, uh, so if if we if you set up the course like we like you've done it in years past, they'll be going downriver on the first leg of the 500 with the uh, red red boys on the right let's see red yellow when red oh, yellow red, yellow they, yellow boys on the uh, i'm sorry yellow red yellow red boys on the right okay so that if they're paddling outside of the course like we've done in years past then they'll be going down river with red buoys on their left yeah and they'll be turning to the finish line with yellow buoys on their left. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. We will have people down there to guide the people around those poles. Yeah. We're not going to take a chance on people trying to guess where they're supposed to go. We're going to have people down there in kayaks telling them where to go. Okay. Great. Do you All right. Any, do you have any problem with that, Zach? No, I think if that's a good course layout and that feels good to everybody, um, especially yourself, I am okay with that for sure. Okay. Yeah, that sounds um, good. I, yeah, as long as they're not, I, I would not have them coming back, coming in a lane because that's going to cause confusion when they approach the dock at the finish. That's what because I said. So I, I feel better well, off on the outside. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's see what else. Oh. Um, yeah, you're gonna have porta potties, right, uh, Zach? Yes, we are. They're gonna be they're gonna be next to the shore staging and where the uh, the end of the kayaks will be set up. Um, okay. There will be two there for access. Okay, I'm still trying to get a the people that have it. They have a taco wagon that uh, they park in town uh, during the week, mm -hmm. and I'll let them know that we're having a competition and they can park. Uh, out by the entrance to, uh, to the gravel parking area uh, for lunches, but I can't guarantee they're going to make it. Okay, yeah, we, we talked about that as definitely a possibility for championships. Um, we're telling folks to prep their families to pack a lunch because, um, again, we're not 100% sure of what our food option for families outside of registered uh, folks and delegations will be. Um, but if they happen to be able to come for time trials, I think everybody will appreciate that. Uh, but at the same time, I want to prepare them for the case that they they may not be able to be making it for time travel. Now, I didn't see all of the, your PowerPoint because I just got on to my, I finally got the uh, webinar up on my computer. So um, I will review the PowerPoint if you send it to me tomorrow. And if I have any issues, I will bring them up. Perfect. Um, does anybody else have any questions, especially while we have Jack on the line here? Um, is Howard County on? Yeah, Kathy is on. I'll open Kathy. Kathy, you're open. Hey guys, how's it going? Hi, Kathy. Um, you need five boats, and I've got five boats for you. You are awesome. 
<laughs> we should have stopped the recording right before you said Jack is awesome. <laughs> I know. No, I'm not going to take that back. Jack is awesome. So, Kathy, <laughs> when you get here, you have to label the boats. Okay. And those boats are yours until after the championships. They will not be used by other people, even uh, during uh, the training period, because all my people have to sign boats. Okay, that's awesome. We can do that. I'll be there bright and early. Okay. I do have a question about the um, the families, though, because this is our first year coming. Um, do the families usually hang out in the delegation tent if we put up a pop-up, or do they have to sit separate and not be in the delegation area? They'd be in the delegation area in the pop-ups. Yeah, awesome. there's, no, there's no separation. The only thing is really as far as separation is once you get on staging and or on the docks or whatever, if you're not competing and not in staging, it's free for all. Hang out with the families, have that camaraderie, just have a good time while you're out there. All right, sounds good. Thank you so also, much. Um, uh, Zach and uh, Mike, the um, pavilion is available to us all day on Saturday. Yeah, good point, uh, Jack. Yeah, where we have had the control center and all that, um, that's, that's free game. The only thing we're going to be doing there in the morning is volunteer check-in. Um, once volunteers get checked in, get trained, then that pavilion picnic uh, where we've had the opening ceremony in the past um, and where we've had the control center, that, that picnic area is, is open for a uh, spectator hanging out, get out get, getting out exactly. of the sun, et cetera. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to mention is that it's, it's available for people to sit in and watch what's going on. All right. Are there any other questions before we close up tonight? Um, see any hands up I uh, don't see any in let's see uh, nope that's an old question it looks like we are good again I will make one last request for questions if anybody has any um, and if not I want to thank you guys for joining our webinar um, no not questions. only for the webinar I want to thank all of you guys as well for all you've done throughout the season. Um, I know coming off the heels of summer games, right in the kayaking, it, it's a lot. And, you know, you guys do so much. You guys get out in the water. You get your athletes rocking and rolling so early right after summer games that without the hard work that you guys put in, without the hard work that the families do to get their athletes to practices and consistently get them exposed to being in the kayak, we wouldn't be able to get to this weekend with the success that we have. Um, and again, I just cannot thank you guys enough for all the work you do throughout the year, not even just kayaking, because you guys coach other sports and we thoroughly appreciate all the work that you do. Um, we do have uh, one quick question. Do volunteers get lunches? Yes, those who have registered um, and are officially volunteers, yes. Um, I, I'm hoping that's your question. If your question is volunteers um, for your delegation who are coming, if they're not officially registered to volunteer through us, meaning Special Mix Maryland, and they're just coming to help you in the delegation, unless they're uh, registered members of your delegation, they would not get lunches officially. I hope um, that answers your question, what about, Lisa. What about volunteers that are going to register on the day of? Yeah, volunteers that are registering um, through Special Mix Maryland and through our operations will get fed, and they'll be recognized with their hats and their designated volunteerism, um, that they will get lunches. So, Jack, your folks on the water that you're counting on will have lunches. They're in our lunch count. Okay. And and I'll the other thing um, that we also recognize... I'll have some names for you. Well, Jack, we'll, we'll touch base. I'll give you a call after this. Uh, we're off this webinar. Okay. I also do want to recognize, as Zach mentioned, our management team. Um, that, that comes out and helps run the event. Obviously, without them, it's not possible. And um, obviously, with Jack and um, Ben and everyone there at Washington College and the community there, um, allowing us to come and, and hosting our event for us, we really want to uh, give a huge shout out um, to Jack and his team in Washington College, etc. It's a beautiful place. I'm looking forward to coming down and seeing the new boathouse this weekend. So again, Jack, to you and Washington College, thank you for all of your efforts. Great. Oh, hey, uh, one one reminder. This is Mike. Uh, at first, yes, absolutely. Thank you to everyone. Um, I don't think this was in the slides, but as a reminder, we did this last year and it worked extremely well. Um, at check-in, your your delegation will be given a large trash bag to use to 
put all your trash in and leave it where your um, your tents are at the end of the day, and we'll come around and pick it up. Uh, if you need another one, uh, if you are, um, I don't know, have a lot of trash, uh, you can always get another one from us at the control center. Uh, but we will be using that again, and, and please do encourage your, your athletes, your families, uh, to leave the, uh, the facility in better condition than it was when we got there, even though it's in great condition when we get there. So, But thank you again to everybody as well. All right. Again, thank you all for being on the webinar tonight. Thank you for all the work you've put in this season. Um, if you have any follow-up questions that pop into your head over the next day or two that you're concerned about, please feel free to reach out and email myself, give me a phone call, um, and we will connect to clear those things up. Uh, thank you for being on. Have a great night. Good night.